Good morning, everybody. This is Chris Rommel, ed educator at the Nature Center. And today we're doing a live video on Arbor Day. Happy Arbor Day to everyone out there. Arbor Day celebrates all the trees that we have here. So it's customary to plant a tree um, on Arbor Day as well. So if, you, if you're lucky to, to be able to do that, you should definitely do that today. Um, but today our presenter, Jessica Kratz, will be uh, telling us all about Arbor Day, and she'll be going through the trail here at the, the Nature Center on the Nature Trail, all about the different kinds of trees and all the unique kinds of different trees that we have here. So that's very exciting to see here. Um, there's a lot of trees that are coming in bloom right now. So we have pink, we have green, we have all different sorts of but, uh, budding trees, different beautiful colors here. And if you are able to, on this beautiful Arbor Day, come down to the Nature Center or any different, different part of the Greenbelt and see what, tra what trees are coming uh, to life after this long winter that we've had. Um, so before we uh, begin, we'd also like to do our land acknowledgement on the Greenbelt. So um, we acknowledge that the land that uh, we are known now as Staten Island is the ancestral land of the Lenape. Those are the indigenous people who inhabited, cared for, and stewarded this land, which, which was known to them at the time as Aquahanga Manaknag. So we thank the indigenous tribes back then for caring for this land that we are lucky to be standing on right now. So without further ado, we're going to start our Arbor Day hike. And I present to you our presenter, Jessica Kratz. Good morning everyone. I see trees of green, skies of blue, and I'm so happy to be sharing Arbor Day and the kickoff to City Nature Challenge with you. And first, a brief history of Arbor Day. Um, goes all the way back to the early 1870s with uh, Jay Sterling Morton of Nebraska, who um, came up with a day to um, plant and celebrate trees. And now Arbor Day is celebrated annually. Um, Arbor Day Foundation is still headquartered in Nebraska, in the city of Nebraska. And in most states, New York and New Jersey included, it's the last Friday of April. There are some other states where the planting season is a little different. Some southern states that choose uh, January, February, some northern states that March. And it is celebrated in other countries another time as well. But generally speaking, for most of us, it's the last Friday in April. And this year we have the longest possible distance of time between Earth Day and Arbor Day. So I've been enjoying these, uh, these green days and it's given me time to really take pause and notice the phenophase, an observable stage or phase in the annual life cycle of a plant or an animal that can be defined by a start time and an end time. And we have some really great examples of phenophase, and these are things you can photograph. So on this tree right here, we have some, some seeds. And um, that's something, you know, if you were to take a photograph to try to get this tree identified, be part of the city nature challenge, you want to take it picture of the cluster of leaves, you know, you see that they're kind of fairly new, you got those seeds. Then you might also want to take pictures from a distance so you can get an idea of the overall tree habit, kind of the, you know, the overall pattern, the branching pattern, and also get, get a picture of the trunk. You can put up to four photos in, in iNaturalist, and we'll talk about that later, but, but right now we're taking a look at the fact that this tree has some seeds, and this wind is definitely really good for seed dispersal. And if you look around and behind there, you'll notice the fact that we have different trees in different, you know, different stages here. And this one has some telltale signs. We got ourselves a beech tree. We still have some of those paper leaves we had all winter. Look at those big cigar-shaped buds. So it's really important to kind of capture these, you know, phase, these, these quick moving details because it tells us a lot about interdependence, about climate change, you know, by getting these, these pictures from community scientists like yourself year after year, scientists will know certain things about, you know, how things are affected if, you know, things are moving forward, if the trees are blooming later than the animals that migrate and look for them are looking for food. So it's just some kind of really important detail and, um, you know, just a quick, easy thing, you know, if you want to participate in iNaturalist and you don't have that much else around you. Um, the fact that dandelions are in flower, that's a good one to take a picture and capture. Um, dandelions are really great food source for our pollinators that, you know, are very active this time of year. Um, 
bees being one, you know. We, we, we need lots of things to keep our flowers, the pollen spreading and food supply going, so, you know, bees, wasps, smaller insects, um, and of course, you know, we've had some birds flying around, um, birds are great pollinators as well, and another really interesting tree we have right here is our eastern redbud. I learned a cool word today. I think it's cauliflory, kind of like cali cauliflower. You see the, the, the buds, the flowers, are coming right out of the branch. So that's that word. And this is a very particular, it's usually about a week or so, a very particular phytophage we're in. You come back here in a week, probably, and you will have green leaves on this. You know, the, the petals, the flowers will be down and it'll be green leaves, so you won't recognize it quite the same way. So it's really important to capture these details, and that's part of the reason why we have City Nature Challenge around this time, where we have um, things blooming and blossoming throughout here in different stages and phases, and also the reason why Arbor Day is around this time is because it's the peak time for planting in most of the places that choose to observe it, observe it now. So, um, well, I mentioned a lot of things, we have seen a lot of different trees here. One of the things I like about trees, why they make such a great subject to photograph for iNaturalists, for you know, a general observation of nature is they don't move, really. You know, it's a lot trickier to capture, you know, the bumblebee that was high up in this tree a few moments ago, pollinating, than it is to capture a tree. Notice we have some variations of light and shade. Um, you know, the leaves, you know, you can see how the sun filters through the trees, and that's a, it's a really great word for that, a Japanese word called Koma Lebe. Um, but yeah, you have the ability to kind of photograph and look for different things. And trees, of course, provide habitat for a lot of other animals, a lot of interconnectedness here. And did you know there are actually 7 million trees in New York City? And lots of them are right here in the Staten Island Green Belt. And we're going to walk towards the trail where we're going to see a lot more trees. And while we're there, and we're going to look over here and notice, you know, we're talking about phenophases, things with kind of, you know, a limited period. And we got Virginia Bluebell, a beautiful native flower here. And, um, you know, by kind of taking a picture and observing over time, we'll get a sense of, you know, how that's doing, when can that bloom, how long that stays for. And right now we're just going to kind of watch it, the beautiful blue and green waxing the green there. That's fun. Chris Ricker's on the, uh, on the, on the stream and he says happy arbor day happy arbor day to you too Rick, uh, chris ricker glad you can join us i see a few people different people have joined us hello to you all happy arbor day we are on the nature trail right next right next to the um, the nature center and we're going through the different uh trees on the trail here for arbor day a lot of trees are in bloom right now it's actually a very windy day so it actually looks like the trees are actually waving towards us. Case in point. <laughs> Hello, I trees. I think it's the sound of the wind through the trees is something like citherism. It's it's P S I. It's, it's got this like interesting combination of sounds. But well, we're gonna let our hikers pass by for a moment. Good morning. And before we ID some more trees, we're gonna look at some other things that popped up in the ground recently here. Poison ivy, and notice it has the signature of three leaves connected by a central point there. Um, you know what they say, leave it, free, let it be. Um, if you do have incidental contact with that, definitely wash your yourself and your clothing. Usually, it takes up to four hours, at least four hours for it to show up. But you know, be as careful as you can with that. But again, another thing you might want to um, photograph and observe, and behind the poison ivy is Virginia Creeper. Notice there's five in that cluster. And that one gets really, you know, we talked about a very different phenophase, but in the fall, that gets a really bright red. And while we're here, we have some real great telltale bark here, right? We got these horizontal lenticels, we got this burnt potato chip looking bark. And if you look up, you can see smaller leaves. I like Likelihood that's a cherry tree of sorts, probably a black cherry tree. And behind it, oh, okay, we have um, a different representation on poison ivy on that tree right there, the hairy rope. And if you look up around 
here next to that tree, that skinny young one right there. It's got some star shaped leaves. So we're looking at sweet gum. And again, by photographing leaf clusters and um, the bark and maybe from a distance the tree, you can put up to four photos in iNacros. And I will go through some more steps about all that in a little bit after we look at some more beautiful, beautiful green things. Right here next to these trees is a shrub. Shrubs have multiple stems. And this one right here, the leaves are, I mean, what a difference a leaf makes. Pretty sure we got, you know, nice leaves there. Um, probably got them scented. And we're looking at some, uh, we're looking at some probably spice bush there, but again, take those photos and uh, crowdsource some identification to be sure. Behind that, behind this log and a little bit of poison ivy, there's a second year garlic mustard. It's an invasive that we constantly combat. Come out here, make sure you, you know, that if that's pulled during one of our stewardship events, it goes in a trash bag so it doesn't further spread. How do we know it's a second year? We know it's a second year as opposed to a first year because those leaves are kind of more um, pointy, kind of more spade or arrow looking as opposed to like a rounded one. And I think the flower might have something to do with that as well. I like the spice bush because uh, a week ago it was the only thing that was green here. So we had plenty of spice bushes in the distance and uh, that was a, a great introduction to spring. Now everything's looking green now. Yeah, this isn't a good time to still get familiarize with everything before we get super duper like a wash and green, but it is really nice to be able to see that. The subtle changes in spring and then all of a sudden you see an explosion of spring things. We have a, a big patch of uh, second year volatile. More garlic mustard, second year. I know we have a nice like, wash and green going. Let's see. One of the trees I want to look for since we're out here on this trail in the green belt is a tulip tree. I, I know we mentioned in our land acknowledgement earlier that Chris mentioned that um, we're in the land of the Lenape. And the Lenape would use that tree. They would um, hollow it out, burn, burn it, hollow it out, scoot the inside, and make make canoes to kind of transport themselves between Staten Island, by and large, between Staten Island and New Jersey, and possibly some other nearby areas. Let's see. This looks interesting. Hmm. Okay, we got some like. Five on the cluster there. Yeah, it looks like five. Definitely some things you want to start taking pictures of. Um, I don't know. I have a guess, but if anyone in the chat wants to guess what this tree is, um, I'm not 100% sure, so I don't want to give you misinformation. But if it was larger and had a world kind of spiral staircase branching pattern, as opposed to an opposite or an alternate branching pattern, I think I would know for sure, but, you know. Does anyone on the guests want to take a hint or take a guess? We'll be watching the chat. I probably should take a picture of this and then come back to this later. And what app are you taking a picture on? I am using iNaturalist. And I'm actually wondering how much of this you can capture here. iNaturalist is, I know some people like to say it's sort of like an Instagram of community science. But it actually began in 2008 as a master's degree project of a couple of people in information science in, um, in UC Berkeley. And right now, probably increasing as we speak with the City Nature Challenge going on, but there are over 2 million registered users. It's in over 37 languages. And it's, it's run by the California Academy of Sciences and National Geographic Society. So it's a big community science app that uh, an online social network of people sharing biodiversity information to help each other learn about nature. And I think a lot of details aside from this city nature challenge and what we learn about, you know, phenology and climate change, there's also sometimes I think new species have been um, identified or verified in the area. I, I was watching a lecture a few weeks ago, I think, um, Xiao Wang, who's um, pretty active 
um, in native plants and with um, mosses. He identified something new for the New York City area in Alley Pond. Wish I remember what it is, but things like this. I mean, who would think in 2021 with all the technology and all the research that's already been done, new species and new species to an area can still be, can still be, um, you know, found, but with a lot of experts and a lot of people in the know looking at things. And sometimes we're looking at overlooked things. And that's part of the reason why, you know, trees have a lot of, you know, I mean, trees are wonderful and charismatic, but on the trees, like right here, we have moss. And a lot more is known about a lot of other packs of plants, but I now feel this has been a great place for some, uh, some identification and some work on the bryo yellow spider. Uh, Chris is gonna get a good look at that, that moss on this tree here. Angel also mentioned that the, the, um, the plant we just saw before might be a horse chestnut. Would you agree with that? <laughs> I can see, I can see how that's possible. Um, so, um, I, I, I forget if you mentioned it, but, uh, Arbor Day is, I think it's on its 149th year. It started in 1872. If I do my math correctly, that's a very, it's even older than Earth Day. Earth Day is only 51 years old. So we've been celebrating this long, long before. And I read somewhere that um, about over a million trees were planted that year too. Um, that sounds, that sounds right. Um, you're right. This is, you know, of course, um, Arbor Day and the celebration and the planting of things related to trees, of course, predates a lot of the technology. And the other celebration we're having today, City Nature Challenge, we're only in the fifth one. The first one of those was in 2016 between Los Angeles and San Francisco, which was between the uh, California Academy of Sciences and Natural History Museum of Los Angeles. And now there are over 400 cities internationally competing. New York has been part of it since um, 2017 and this year there's a we've, they've kind of pumped it up for a lot of different reasons the battle of the boroughs component and there's also um 21 parks in new york city a part of a park by park challenge Staten Island greenbelt has been matched up with fort green park so um if you're going to be taking some photos in the next four days and uploading your observations um you know that's that's where you want to get more than fort green park but it's everybody wins because we all get more information and inspiration and spread the word that we can kind of, you know, we might be doing some of this a little bit socially distant apart, but we're doing this together for science. But back to, um, back to the Arbor Day, that's a really, I got to put down on the calendar for 2021 that, the, I'm sorry, 2022 already, that, that's something we should think about, but I don't know if this is just coincidence or destiny, but um, Frederick Law Olmsted, who was the first person to kind of conceive of the idea of the green belts coincidentally in the year 1871 around the time um jay sterling martin was coming up with that early arbor day um his birthday was it's end of april i want to say the 27th give or take um but we'll be celebrating the 200th birthday of frederick ball Olmsted, who we know aside from kind of getting some things together for this park you know he's behind central park prospect park some parks in buffalo and some parks elsewhere so has a big legendary landscape architect with a lot of imprint on things. So it looks like next year we'll be celebrating Arbor Day 150 and um, Olmsted 200. And no, no coincidence there. It, it's a good time to really reflect on the importance and kind of evolution of things related to trees. I think we're going to pause for a minute and watch the trees nodding in, in appreciation. What a beautiful day for Arbor Day today. <laughs> yeah, we couldn't, I don't think we could have asked for a better one here. 
This is interesting. I don't know if this is exactly. I'm gonna go off trail. I don't. I notice my uh, wearing khaki pants and they're tucked in my socks. I'm being very careful. But just to point this out. To do we have a small thing growing out of this tree trunk? Mm. Or did it just kind of fall? Oh, out? it's I it fell in. Oh, okay, it's um, <laughs> that would have been something. It, we we do get new growth out of things, and that's another um, that's another thing. Sometimes we get to notice here symbiotic relationships. I'm, I'm not sure if we're if we, if we walk a little further if we see any lichen. Um, also, um, decomposing. Decomposing invertebrates and fungi that help break down. If you notice, there's a lot of um We've had some storms, most recently tropical storm Isaias, but some of this could be from Sandy. And even the March 2010 storm, so we have a lot of um, you know, woody stuff to be broken down. Right now it's a home for things, and then that those things will help make it new soil. Oh, we just had um just had somebody land on that. I scared them away. Probably a little pollinator, but maybe they'll Underneath the log. Just the, oh, we have a little fly. So our pollinators are active, but with winds that gusting up to 20 miles an hour, it adds a little bit to the challenge here. Some more moss. And I don't think I, you know, I danced around it, moved to the finish line, but I don't think I quite got to the start date of how we use I have. So anyone who's on the fence and considering you know, downloading the iNaturalist app for the first time, you go to iNaturalist.org, create an account. You can use iNaturalist on a mobile device or on the website. You know, you can upload pictures right from your smartphone if you have one. You can also take pictures on a digital camera and then upload them with the, the date and time if they didn't already geotag for you for that. Um, but again, we have a four-day period right now from April 30th to... Uh, May 3rd, and then after that, you know, we get to crowdsource IDs, so uh, if we don't have a research grade verified by then, maybe uh, that little tree right there, whether it was a uh, hickory or um, a horse chestnut, you know, some, some of us can weigh in during that period. And then by uh, May 10th, I think they're going to be announcing the, the winner, like who's the, uh, which city had the most observations this time. Um, and maybe which of the 21 green spaces in New York City had the most, you know. So, so we have a four days of getting out here, observing, looking for things. Um, when, and when you, after, actually, after you get to iNaturalist.org, you register yourself, you choose that you want to be part of this project. Um, but anything that happens during this time period that's collected in those areas, it's automatically, I think, brought in. So anything that's in New York City, will be City of Child, Nature Child, New York City. Anything that was done in Staten Island, Greenbelt, or the other Staten Island site, Fresh Kills Park, that has a project, automatically uploaded if it's, if it's there. Um, and again, you take pictures, you upload up to four pictures of your, um, your living thing, um, your plant, your animal, your fungi, you know, maybe you got some lichen too. <laughs> um, and then, you know, date time, you know, and, you know, idea the best you can. It will, once enough people, once there's some consensus, it'll be research grade, and there's an extra week after those four days for that to be done. Is there any questions in the chat? No, no questions so far. Do you want to, it, it's almost time to wrap up, so you want to show them the uh, big, uh, big, big Bessie? Oh, okay. We're going to take a look at one of our signature trees here. Just like Jessica said, there's any questions in the chat, we're definitely here to answer them. Oh, I do have something, and I'll probably add to this later. If um, anybody is doing the City Nature Challenge over the next four days and run into some difficulty with the app or what have you, there's been a great partner in New York City since um, 2017, the Macaulay Honors College. And they have some people kind of, I think the graduate students kind of working this all weekend. So City Nature Challenge NYC at gmail.com. Or call 262-228-8682. Right, so this is going to be our last tree of the video. Can you talk about what this is? Yeah, this is a, 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 this
this is a. Oh, before we get to that, there is no charge. Uh, someone asked if there's a charge for the mobile uh, iNatural app. That's a great point. It's completely free. We want, you know, it's to share the information and knowledge. So, yeah, it's, it's a free download. Should be, you know, fairly straightforward and easy to download or to get to the website, but completely free. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good question. So what are we looking at here? We are looking at a basswood tree, which is uh, in the linden family, I think. And it's really big and it's been here for quite some time. Some of our early childhood kids in times where social distance wasn't such a concern would sort of wrap their arms around and we'd see how many how many kids would get around and hug their trees. But um, Arbor Day is definitely a great um, day to uh, to hug a tree. And I know that was something that about a year ago, a lot of people kind of promoted in the uh, in the social distance. So that might be a, a great way to sign off here. I don't know if you can catch that wisteria and bloom in the background. Another little finger face detail for us. I'm just looking at all these roots. This is a big tree. Yeah, it takes... It'll take probably three of me, maybe. <laughs> maybe more. <laughs> and um, Angel did uh, um, make a great point. Chris Record did make a how-to video on iNaturalist. So check out our YouTube page uh, for that at the Staten Island Greenbelt. And he'll explain everything there. But so... Thank you, Jessica, for showing us about our local trees here in the Greenbelt. Um, happy Arbor Day to everybody. Uh, it's a beautiful day. Come out, enjoy some of the wildlife out here. Maybe plant a tree yourself. And um, not only should we be caring about the trees on Arbor Day, but every day of the year as well, right? Because nature is here every single day, and we need to help protect and and uh keep it green <laughs> because it's really really rec uh, it's really therapeutic to walk through nature don't you agree <laughs> yeah I, I, I love the fact that we just had a little great tree frog tr chime in in there perfect timing <laughs> well um happy arbor day to everyone and thanks for uh thanks for stopping by and viewing nature with us so we'll be back again for more programming stay tuned